Representative Munson, thanks for being with us today. Yeah, thanks for having me on. So let's just start here. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, your district. Um, well, I represent a very rural district in southern Minnesota. Uh, it's currently 23B, which will mean nothing in a, in a month because we're changing everything. Um, I was elected in a special election just uh, four years ago and uh, been working on a lot of issues at the Capitol with uh, health care was one of my biggest issues, uh, price, medical price transparency, uh, working to lower the cost of health care, and then working on some agriculture issues. And uh, I've been involved in some transparency issues for the legislative process, kind of working to understand how the legislative process is uh, somewhat broken and how can we improve that? How can we reduce the influence of lobbying in the legislature um, and bring more transparency to the, the people of Minnesota. And in terms of uh, meeting people in your district, what are you hearing from them? What do they want to see addressed in 2022? Well, I think the, the, the number one issue, well, actually it's probably a, a, a toss up between uh, giving back the enormous surplus that the state has amassed from, from uh, overtaxing people and also addressing uh, the overreach of government uh, as they've experienced during COVID. Um, I know that, that many people in my district want the, the, the governor to no longer have the authority to write law unilaterally and go through the legislature. Uh, that was a very contentious debate we had in the last year, um, but they also want to have all their money returned to the taxpayers. And so um, working on those two pieces are important. Um, another third issue that's important is school choice. Uh, we've seen a big pushback on the public school system in Minnesota as they've implemented mask mandates, maybe looking at vaccine mandates, uh, the critical race theory or the uh, equity policies that have been pushed through the public schools. And so having an option for taking some of some or all of that money and going to a different school would be another uh, very big debate that we should likely have this this legislative session. Yeah, and that was one of the questions I had next for you. What did you make of that $7.7 billion surplus? And how, how would you, uh, what should be done with that money? Well, I think it's really important to talk. It's actually more than $7.7 billion. 7.7 um, is the estimated over taxation that we're going to be conducting here this biennium. But we also have squirreled away an enormous surplus of money in a savings account of the rainy day fund. Um, I like the idea of having a reserve fund from my family, and most Minnesotans should keep a reserve. But when government has a reserve fund like the rainy day fund, they tend to not look for cutting spending or they, they, they don't question whether or not certain programs are providing the value that we sought in the original legislation. And unless we have a real deficit where we are looking for money, we're never going to stop growing government and actually make some cuts. And so I believe that we should be getting rid of the entire surplus and giving the rainy day fund back to the to the taxpayers of Minnesota in as, as close a proportion as we can to the people that paid it in. We shouldn't be just redistributing it equally to everyone, but trying to return that money in a, a fair portion to the to who paid it in. And you're a member of the New House Republican Caucus. For someone that might just be learning about that, um, Tell us about that, Cockle. How would you describe it and uh, what sort of issues are, are important to the members? Well, the, a caucus is simply a meeting of legislators. Um, when I came into legislature, uh, I wanted to work on legislation that was not approved by management or approved by my leadership or the Speaker of the House. And so I wanted to work on that legislation independent of of some central management telling me what I can and can't work on. If I voted against a bill that was uh, sponsored by Republicans. I wanted to send out a press release on why I did this. And leadership in my caucus controlled the media releases and stuff. And so uh, it was important for me to have staff that works for my district and not for management. And so we, fi we figured out a few legislators and I figured out that we can hire our own staff to work for our districts if we just say we're caucusing separately as our main caucus but it doesn't prohibit us from working with all of the other Republicans and Democrats. It's just that our main caucus was a separate one. It had never been done in the state in our, in our history. Uh, so we, we started a new caucus as a, as a main caucus, but there's 22 caucuses at the Capitol, um, the Posse Caucus, the, uh, the Black Caucus, and, and different in rural caucus. So uh, meeting with other legislators is nothing new, but having it be a primary caucus with, with, that receives an allocation of staff um, that was what we did that was new. And over the past uh, three years, we've 
Uh, we've led on certain issues. We've had our own press releases, our own press conferences, and been able to write any legislation that we want for our districts. And so it's been giving us uh, a lot of independence in that manner. And as far as your committee assignments, you serve on the House Climate, Health, Finance, and Policy, and Redistricting Committees. What do you think those committees should focus on uh, this session? Well, I hope that the Energy Committee, which is what I call the Climate Committee, <laughs> the Energy Committee will really focus on um, approving uh, nickel mining in, in northern Minnesota or working to push that because now we've seen that Tesla has actually agreed to buy nickel from uh, mines in Minnesota. And, and my focus on the Energy Committee has been highlighting the fact that the green energy policies have been uh, you know, increasing slavery in developing nations and the way in which we mine nickel and lithium and cobalt and neodymium and all these other minerals used for electric cars and wind turbines and solar panels is actually uh, causing environmental destruction in the developing nations. And we should be really focusing on uh, mining here in Minnesota and doing it correctly under the strictest environmental standards. And I'd like to see the Energy Committee take up that approval and push for um, mining here in Minnesota for green energy and not enslaving people in other countries. And just finally, when all said and done here at, at the end of session, what needs to have happened for you to consider it a success? Well, I'd, I'd love to, to get my Give It Back Act through the legislature, which would return the money to the taxpayers. I have a food freedom bill um, that I'd like to see uh, fully implemented. We've made some gains, but uh, to allow people to, um, to, to be able to buy food locally and sell food at farmers markets that they can't do today. We saw the pandemic cause a disruption in the food uh, supply chains, and so this would help address that. Um, and then I have a bill called the Right to Shop Act, which would allow people to shop for health care wherever they want. And they can shop for doctors based on quality and care uh, and price, as opposed to where the insurance companies dictate they go. That would do a lot to reducing the cost of health care in Minnesota. Those would be some great wins. And of course, the, uh, the Never Again bill that Cal Bar Barr has. Uh, that I'm a co-author of would stop the governor from writing law unilaterally during pandemics and, uh, and really address the wrongs that the government did during the last pandemic.